Hi, I'm Beth, creator of Dry It, Can It. I'm not an expert, but I like to share with you what I've learned about dehydrating food, canning food, and share with you recipes that I have made um, using dehydrated food or for canning recipes. Today I want to talk to you about dehydrating rhubarb and share with you a rhubarb ice cream uh, recipe that I'm going to make. Um, let's talk about rhubarb first of all. It's a great treat, it's spring, and when I'm lucky enough to get some from a good friend, I want to take advantage of it. Um, certainly one of the most common ways to take care of rhubarb is to wash it, chop it, freeze it, and that works great. I have some in my freezer. But I have a lot of rhubarb this year and I didn't want to take up that much freezer room. And so what I did is I actually dehydrated some. And dehydrating it is a great way to go to save, um, to save your rhubarb with a minimal amount of space. To dehydrate it, you simply chop it. I put mine in the dehydrator for at 125 degrees. I think it took about 10 hours or so to do that. Um, this has, is about six cups. This was about uh, 16 cups of chopped rhubarb. Um, I think about 20 pounds. So it really saves quite a bit of room. To rehydrate rhubarb, you can simply take what you need, put it in cold water, give it about 20 minutes, and you'll have some pliable rhubarb. Here's why I won't use rehydrated rhubarb. To me, when it's rehydrated, it's flexible, but it just loses so much of its taste. Um, to me, it just kind of tastes watery with just a hint of the rhubarb. So what I do is I use mine either dehydrated or what I often do is I powder it. So in other words, I take some of this, I put it in a grinder, like a coffee grinder, and then I grind it until I have a powder. This powder is so flavorful. It's like eating the fresh rhubarb or the, even the dried one because it's concentrated. So um, that is two ways that I use rhubarb, dried, dehydrated, I should say, and then powdered. Um, both of these work really well in terms of, of recipes for cooking. You can put them in breads just as the way they are. You can put them in cakes, puddings, um, but the applications are a little bit different. I'm going to share with you today and I'm going to make a rhubarb ice cream and I'm going to use the powder for that simply because I don't want the harder pieces of, of rhubarb in there and when you're making an ice cream and you're freezing it right away, it really wouldn't have time to rehydrate. So let's get started with my recipe for rhubarb ice cream. As we move into Memorial Weekend, I think it'll be a great sweet but tart treat. Let's get started. All right, to make my ice cream, I'm just gonna use a few simple ingredients. I'm gonna use some cream, some milk, my rhubarb powder, some sugar, a pinch of salt, and some of my homemade vanilla. So to make the ice cream, I like to mix it in the mixer because I think it gets the sugar and everything dissolved. So that works really well. And I just put all of the ingredients in. So I've got cream, I have sugar, I am going to add uh, some milk simply because the cream gets pretty heavy otherwise, like so. I have a couple tablespoons of my rhubarb powder that I showed you earlier, a pinch of salt because that always brings out the flavor, and then probably about a teaspoon of, of the homemade vanilla. And again, to make homemade vanilla, just get yourself a pint of whiskey or a pint of vodka. I like vodka, some good vanilla beans, Madagascar are the best. Put it in there, let it sit for a few months, and you have a much less expensive vanilla than you can get at the store, but it's so good. So then I'm going to put this um, in my mixer, and I am going to mix this just until it's mixed. I don't want to whip it because I did use whipping cream here. I want to be careful about um, not overdoing that. So let me plug in my mixer. I'm a big fan of uh, keep things unplugged and always double check so you don't get fingers in there. So I'm just going to mix that until it's blended. Um, again, I don't want to uh, whip it by any means. And once this is all mixed up, which really is just about now, um, then I'm going to put that in my ice cream maker. What I'm going to do is just tap a spoon to the bottom and see if I can feel the sugar still in there. And I can, so I'm going to mix this just a little bit further. You'll, if you put a spoon towards the bottom of your bowl and it feels kind of gritty, then you know that the sugar's in there. So I like to just mix this for a couple of minutes, put it in the ice cream maker. Everybody's ice cream maker is going to have different directions. Typically mine's gonna take 20 to 30 minutes to get to a soft serve ice cream. Then I'm gonna put it in the freezer and let it harden. 
But I think this is going to be a really nice way to use the rhubarb. Yep, I can hardly feel any grit now. So I'm going to uh, get my ice cream um, bowl out of the freezer and I will be right back. All right, so this is how easy it is to make ice cream. I've mixed everything up in my mixer and I'm going to pour it into my ice cream bowl. Typically, if you buy an electric ice cream bowl, you're going to have a bowl filled with some kind of a liquid or gelatin. You're gonna put that in the freezer so that everything freezes. I find that you really need to have it in there for two days. One day, for whatever reason, just doesn't seem to be enough. Um, I'm gonna double check, make sure that my mixer is unplugged, which it is, and take my beater off. And then I am going to simply dump my mixture which is all mixed into the ice cream bowl. And I just want to scrape out whatever's there, whatever undissolved sugar there might be or whatever rhubarb pieces that might be left. Get all of that goodness out of here, like so. Give that a quick stir, taste it. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. So then I'm going to move my mixer out of the way. You're going to have some kind of a beater bar with your ice cream maker. And as your ice cream maker turns, this is going to scrape the sides of it. So I put that in like so, put this on, and then I will start churning my ice cream. I'll plug this in, and away it goes, and you can't, can't really see it turning, but this will turn for about 20 minutes or so, and then it'll be a soft serve ice cream. I'll put that in the freezer until it gets hard, and then I'll have ice cream. I like to cover it with a towel just to kind of keep the cold in, and I will be back once we have ice cream. Here you can see the ice cream churning. It's almost at the consistency where I'll stop and put it in the freezer. Little bits of rhubarb. ice cream has been in the freezer for a couple of hours. Let's see what we've got. Definitely it's frozen. It's probably soft frozen at this point in time because it's only been in a couple hours. But if I scoop it up, I have a nice scoop. You can see the little specks of rhubarb in it. And let's see what it tastes like. This looks so good. Mmm. Okay. So this is sweet. It's creamy. It's got the sweetness from the sugar. I think it's got just enough tartness from the rhubarb. If I let it melt in my mouth, I can just barely feel the little pieces of ground rhubarb. It's really good. This recipe for sure is a keeper for me. When I tasted the ice cream before it was frozen, I thought maybe I had a little bit too much vanilla in it, but the vanilla is really subtle. I think it adds another layer of flavor. This recipe is definitely a keeper. If you like this recipe, the link is below. Um, please, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Follow me for more recipes. Um, rhubarb is a great early spring vegetable, fruit. I'm not sure which one it technically is. Um, but dehydrating it and powdering it is a great way to preserve it, and this is a great way to use it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.